vacuum or a stainless steel, uh, it, it's to be a, an inert electrode. As reference electrode, uh, always when, when you are going to implement sensor, we need to use an embedded uh, commercial or embedded commercial or, or made homemade reference, but in, uh, it is a specific type of references because we don't can uh, perform maintenance in the, in the reference electrode. This is important. And uh, as counter electrode is usually we use stainless steel or platinum. Uh, here there are several pictures related with tests that we have performed at the laboratory and where there are uh, oxygen sensors made with uh, stainless steel and uh, after uh, uh, bending the works in the, in the, in the beam uh, we obtain uh, the, the, the oxygen availability uh, through the analysis of the currents. And uh, this is the, this, it was very interesting because uh, we work with different stream levels and different crack patterns in the, in the beams and we can uh, evaluate these, these processes. Uh, these sensors we have also included in, in some pilots, uh, but we need to perform the measurement on site because we don't have the, the electronic devices to, to operate it uh, remotely and automatically. And also the resistivity sensors are very interesting because uh, they, they provide uh, very, very useful information. You, if you are going to implement the diagram method, you need two electrodes. The problem here is the, the constant cell. You need to perform previous calibrations in uh, aqueous solution and uh, of course in solid, at solid state because the, the electrical field distribution changes uh, uh, depending on the media. Eh? Not, it's not uh, valid, in our opinion, only perform the calibration in solution. Eh? You can have errors in, in, the, in the estimation. And the other one is the four-point method, Wenner, uh, we need to, to include for, for electrodes, inert electrodes uh, made with stainless steel. And they, they provide information uh, related with the corrosion risk, uh, water content, uh, matrix properties, chloride ingress. Uh, it's very, very interesting to, to implement this type of sensors in parallel to, to other sensors. Uh, also, uh, we, ha we have to say that the electrical resistance, no resistivity, only the electrical resistance can be useful uh, if you understand it as a relative parameter. Uh, we, and we can obtain information of this parameter, but uh, always if we have several points of control with the same sensor disposition, uh, with the same position of the electrodes in order to, to compare the same, the same element. And the other type of sensors are the sensors that provide us uh, information about the propagation period related with uh, corrosion process. Uh, it uh, allows us to uh, evaluate the, the process, uh, as a uh, not only qualitative, uh, because we can also obtain the, the potential corrosion uh, value, uh, also with, uh, in, a, in a quantitative way, because we can, we can obtain the corrosion density and therefore the, the corrosion rate. Uh, this is important in order to improve the, the maintenance operations, improve the safety, and uh, make decisions if we need to perform a corrective action. Uh, and also, uh, at material level, it's very interesting to, to work with sensors uh, to uh, establish if we are working with good prediction models so we can improve them. And for the the potential corrosion monitoring, we need also embed uh, a, a reference electrode and place the reference electrode close to the uh, working electrode. It's clear that we cannot uh, perform a, a potential mapping if and or if we want to perform a potential mapping, we need a lot of reference electrodes because we embed it in, inside the, the concrete. Yeah? Uh, therefore, uh, it's important previously to, to define the, the points where we are going to put the, 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 the sensors, was perform a study and evaluate the, the areas with higher corrosion rigs or higher stress. And uh, in this case, uh, we recommend, uh, as the reference electrode is not 
possible to perform a maintenance, we recommend to perform periodical uh, checks with an external reference electrode in order to uh, evaluate, uh, evaluate, to assess if the, the potential corrosion is stable or, or is changing. This is a, and also if it, you have problems with the embed reference electrode, you can perform a hole and embed another one. Eh? This is, a, this is a, an, an option that you have. Here you have two pictures with reference electrodes placed, placed in, in some specimens at laboratory, and here you can see another, on the right, another reference electrode. Uh, you only you need a voltmeter with eight internal impedance. Uh, we recommend at least uh, uh, one mega ohm, uh, but if it is higher, it's better. And the other type of uh, sensors uh, are the sensors that provide us uh, uh, information about the corrosion rate. Yeah? Uh, this type of sensors uh, was. Mm, are, uh, if we work with this, uh, this type of sensors on uh, uh, built structures, we need to place it in, uh, in an external position. Then uh, there are not uh, so much uh, devices available in the market for, for all the structures, for, for implementing on, in all the structures, and we present here uh, two of them. One based on the potential attenuation method. Uh, it, it implements uh, potential static pools and uh, determine the, the critical length. And the other one is based on the uh, methods with a warp ring and uh, provides information directly about the, uh, the, the, the corrosion density and therefore the, the corrosion rate. On the other hand, if we are going to, to build a new structure, we can implement also sensors as uh, elements with working electrode uh, connected with the, with, the, with the reinforced bars and made with the same steel that the reinforcements. Uh, as counter electrode, this is uh, the system that we are using now, and uh, as counter electrode, we, we can use stainless steel, uh, Control electrode, and we are studying the, the, the option of uh, using the reinforcement, uh, but the, it is necessary to complete uh, several conditions. And uh, the reference electrode, also a reference electrode for embedded applications. Here you have uh, several images of the mini potentiostat, the, the sensors. Tomorrow in the training school we can, we can see them. And here you, you have uh, some images of uh, uh, laboratory test where we compare uh, the, the electrical response, uh, both uh, external devices for measuring and the, the embedded uh, sensors. And also there are systems or, or, or uh, multi-parametric sensors that uh, integrate different type of sensors. Uh, I, if you look in the literature, you can find a lot of them, and there are also commercial uh, sensors of this type. Uh, you need to evaluate if the information that they provide uh, are, is the information that you need. Yeah? Uh, at the end, uh, if you are going to work with corrosion sensors, we recommend also use temperature sensor, resistivity sensors, in order to understand what's happening. Later in the, in the pilot monitoring, you are going to see why this is important. Now, uh, Jose is going to talk about uh, an experimental plan. Uh, well, during the first part of the presentation, Professor Gandhi explained the advantages of using corrosion monitoring systems in reinforced concrete structures. As we have seen, they are necessary if we want to reduce cost or we want to reduce the maintenance of the existing structures. And they are necessary if we want to uh, generate uh, accurate prediction models of the structures we are analyzing. They are also very useful if we want to analyze structures will be inaccessible in the future, as for example, buried or submerged elements or offshore structures like this one I show you here in this picture. Nevertheless, using sensors in reinforced concrete structures requires a previous validation by means of experimental plans in laboratory. These tasks are focused on analyzing the sensor, the accuracy 
or the sensor configuration and if it is suitable for real cases, in this case, reinforced concrete structures. In this second part of the presentation, I want to introduce you uh, two examples of uh, these experimental plans we have developed in our laboratory for this purpose. They are focused on the corrosion monitoring system we have developed and patent in, in UPV. And I think the structure of test works can help you to get some ideas or tips you can use in your future experimental plans. Okay. The first uh, experimental plan I want to show you was focused on the corrosion measurement technique we use in our monitoring system. Okay. We have seen in the previous lecture there are numerous uh, techniques for corrosion analysis of reinforcement. Tafel extrapolation has been considered the most accurate method, but it is a time-consuming uh, technique and we can polarize the rebar during the measurement. On the other hand, linear polarization resistance is uh, one of the most commonly used techniques, but uh, because of it is easier, it is a time uh, it's a, the measuring time is reduced and the processing signal is very easy. Nevertheless, there is one problem. It is not as accurate as the travel extrapolation because we use uh, during the signal processing this B coefficient and this can introduce a minor error. Uh, this situation has generated many researchers try to uh, develop new corrosion measurement techniques. Most of them uh, pulse based methods. Uh, for example, the potential step voltammetry, PSV, we have developed in our university. Uh, I want to compare in this experimental plan these five techniques, the accuracy, the reliability, and the pros and cons of each one. Uh, in addition, we need a 100% accurate method, in this case the gravimetry validation is the reference for the correct calibration of corrosion measurements, as indicated in RELAM recommendations. Here I show you the test specimens. We use it in this experimental plan, as you can see, small cylindrical specimens and one sensor embedded in each one. Uh, prior to the casting process, all the sensors were weighted like this in a precision balance for the gravimetric validation at the end of the work. Uh, we used five different concretes. As you can see, the dosages range from uh, ordinary concretes until the latest advance in concrete technology, ultra high performance fiber reinforced concrete. Uh, for each concrete, we prepared 12 specimens, 60 specimens in overall. Uh, after the curing period, all the specimens were partially submerged in sea water, trying to simulate a very aggressive environment. And uh, every week, each sensor was analyzed using each one of the corrosion techniques I have presented previously. Uh, this monitoring period extended for one year. Here I show you some uh, a part of the results we obtained during the corrosion monitoring period. Uh, test graphs, uh, in test graphs I compare uh, all the techniques with the TAFEL extrapolation method, that is, it is considered the most accurate method. Uh, each point represents the corrosion rate obtained in, with each technique on a, any given day. Uh, this kind of graphs are really useful if we want to see the deviation, the overestimation or subestimation of corrosion damage depending on each technique. For example, as you can see, the linear polarization resistance showed the largest deviation, in this case 35% subestimation, and the proposed techniques, the PSV methods, showed an overestimation of corrosion damage between 5 and 17%. All this data is compared, is related to the TAFEL extrapolation technique. Remember, we have to compare it to the 100% accurate method, in this case, the gravimetric comparison. On the other hand, the point spread is also uh, interesting because it indicates the reliability of each one of uh, the techniques we have used. These parameters must be also considered. Well, for the gravimetric comparison, we need to estimate the uh, mass loss uh, depending on each technique. For this case, we prepared like one representation like this. Uh, in this case, I show you the corrosion rates, the evolution, depending on the concrete type, and in this case, uh, for the PSB model 3, okay, uh, one of the proposed techniques. Using the Faraday's law and integrating the results obtained, we calculated the estimated mass loss. 
Now we only need to know the real mass loss to compare uh, both techniques. Okay. For this purpose, all the specimens were subjected to an indirect tensile test, as you can see in this picture. Uh, after this procedure, we saw the corrosion damage accumulated in some of the sensors. We also performed phenophthalein analysis and silver nitrate analysis to check effectively chlorides had promoted or had cor uh, initiated uh, corrosion onset, in this case only in this concrete and not in the very high or ultra high performance concrete. And later, the sensors were subjected to a cleaning process. This procedure indicates uh, several methods to do this. Uh, you can check it uh, for your experimental plans. And after the cleaning process, all the sensors were weighted again using the same precision balance. At the end, uh, the, the difference between the initial and the final weight uh, is the real mass loss. Now we can compare the estimated and the real mass loss. Uh, here I present you this comparison. In this case, each line represents the linear regression between the real mass loss and the estimated mass loss depending on the technique we have used. As you can see, the results more or less fit with what we saw before. Uh, the largest deviation was obtained using the linear polarization resistance, 22% deviation, and only 2% deviation using the Tafel extrapolation technique the most accurate system or about the uh, techniques we have proposed using the PSV model 3 the one that I have validated in my PhD the deviation is only 8% uh, this error is acceptable in reinforcement monitoring uh, in corrosion monitoring of reinforced structures okay yeah okay well, now we have validated this, this technique and we only need to validate the sensor configuration. But before going to real structures, we have to check or we have to see a reinforcement in reinforced concrete structures is not composed by small pieces like I have used in this first experimental plan, but it is a, a network that is continuous and electrically connected. So uh, the interaction between the different parts generates the macrocell current. For example, here I show you one example. This is a partially submerged column in sea water and uh, chlorides penetrate into the lower area generating the local depreciation and the corrosion onset. In the upper part, the reinforcement keeps their initial passivity and the electrochemical difference between the different areas generates the interaction or the electron transfer from anodic to cathodic area, generating the macrocell current. This phenomenon must be considered by the corrosion monitoring systems. For this purpose, I show you this third diagram. I have integrated the sensor we use in our monitoring system. The sensor takes part of macrocell current and later during the measurement, we analyze first the macrocell current and later the local corrosion of the sensor, in this case using the technique we have validated previously. Here I show you some examples of the sensors we use and how do we locate uh, the sensors in the structures using 3D printed pieces. And now in this second experimental plan I want to show you uh, I will check or I will validate uh, that this configuration I, I am drawing here is uh, accurate or it's uh, suitable for real cases, reinforced concrete structures. In this case, this experimental plan is larger. We use bigger specimens, as you can see. We introduce three specimens in each, uh, three sensors in each specimen, sorry. And we use different covers, 5, 10, 20, and 30 millimeters. As you can see, the test specimens were partially submerged in sea water at the end of the cooling period. And we took into account the uh, macrocell current using a carbon fiber mesh that we electrically connected to the uh, sensors, to some of the sensors, to prove that macrocell must be considered by corrosion monitoring systems. As you can see, there are more than 100 sensors, so we use it, the miniaturized equipment we use in real structures because it is impossible to analyze 144 sensors every week uh, during one year. Here I show you some uh, part of the results. In this case, the dashed lines uh, indicate this uh, non-connected configuration, what is to say not taking into consideration the macrocell current. 
As you can see, in high performance concrete, the, uh, the values remain at below 0 0.1, what is to say uh, sensors remain net passive. And in ordinary concrete, we can see differences, for example, here, two orders of magnitudes between one configuration and the other one. And we can see also the difference between the concrete quality in, in one concrete or the other one. Okay. Well, uh, at the end of the monitoring period that extended for one year, we perform a visual analysis. As you can see, larger rust stains were noticeable in the concrete uh, phase and also uh, small cracks. Uh, these rust stains were also uh, were only in the area of the sensors that remain connected to the microcell current. What is to say the sensor configuration we have proposed. Okay. After this, uh, the sensors were removed from the test specimens using the indirect and seal test and were subjected to a cleaning process. Here I show you some pictures, in this case in the high performance concrete, no damage was noticeable in this area. What fits with the data I showed previously, that uh, sensors remain at impassive condition. And in this case we can see a large difference between connected and non-connected non sensors. For example, in this case, this configuration is this one, and here we can see only small pits. If, you, if we increase the cover, we can see mm, there are no pits. And this indicates the macrocell currents must be considered. Nevertheless, we have to check it using the gravimetric comparison. I present here this comparison. For example, this line represents when we only consider the local corrosion, the over subestimation of damage is larger, is higher than 90%. And if we consider both macrocell and local corrosion, what is the configuration we propose in our uh, corrosion monitoring system, the accuracy is only 5% overestimation, what is uh, a good result. Finally, uh, I want to say this big difference is originated because we use a large uh, surface of carbon fiber mesh, but we have checked in real structures, this percentage can be between 5, 10 or 20 until 50%. It depends on several conditions like exposure conditions or concrete quality. At the end, I want to see really. I uh, want to show you really fast this this uh, parallel study I have performed in this second experimental plan using 3D scan to analyze in detail the pitting uh, corrosion, the pitting factor, the pit shape, etc. Okay, I want to prove that uh, using these experimental plans you can validate your your designs for corrosion monitoring. But uh, in addition, you can use to perform these parallel studies or concrete characterizations. Now I think uh, Professor Gandia wanted to show you some examples. Yes, we are only we are going to see in a in a quick quick way uh, some examples of. Uh, this is a, a real example of implementation of sensors uh, within the project resilience. In these pictures, you can see the, the processes of installation of sensors uh, once the, the, the concrete is, is cast, uh, we need to, to check uh, at the facilities uh, if all is running good. Uh, we also perform several uh, specimens as, as reference. In this case, we monitor 10 beams. Okay. Next one. Here uh, there are some images of uh, the connection with the uh, points of control. Uh, here is the processes where the, the is placed in the sea, the, the raft. And this is the process where we are installing the, the sensors on, on, the, on the raft and uh, connecting the, the power supply and the, the unit of control for, for each point. And at the end, we can obtain uh, parameters, uh, corrosion parameters such as uh, corrosion potential, uh, electrical resistance uh, that provides information of concrete, take into account uh, the temperature uh, uh, image because uh, the, the electrical resistance depends of uh, the, the, the ionic mobility depends on, on temperature and therefore it's important to, to monitor this parameter in order to understand what's happening. Next one. 
Here you can see the corrosion density that we, we can, uh, through the, this data, we can obtain the, the corrosion rate. Uh, we can see the corrosion onset of uh, 25 megapascals concrete, and uh, you can check uh, how simultaneously uh, you can uh, see the, the, the potential uh, jump to more electronegative values. Also, you can see that the later the, the potential is, uh, is changing to more electropositive values, but uh, if you check the temperature, uh, the, this uh, specimen is placed on the, on the, on the beam and the, the direct uh, sun can dry the, the, the specimen and it is important to, to, to evaluate. And at the end, if we check the cumulative chart, we can uh, obtain this type of graphs uh, that are uh, directly uh, realized. Uh, you can also, uh, find the, the, that this image is uh, directly the, the, the two stages of uh, the, the corrosion processes, the initiation and propagation period. So the slope, we can estimate when this process uh, could reach uh, uh, a limit, a uh, non-acceptable limit, and we can quantify the amount of, of corrosion of each location. And this, that's all. This is our presentation about the source. Thank you. If you have some questions, or I don't, I don't know if we are on time. <laughs> Hello everybody, uh, my name is Roman Batayer. I'm an engineer at Whitech Lab. We're a small company and we, we, I want to thank Radic Wood for inviting us <coughs> to show uh, how long-term monitoring of corrosion in reinforced uh, concrete uh, structures is possible. Uh, we are a small technological company which developed uh, technological solutions in the fields of telecommunication, electronics, and integrated computer systems. Uh, our solutions explore the potentials of short, medium, and large range radio communications. <laughs> Sorry, thank you. <laughs> Combined with the advanced sensing and connecti connectivity of mobile devices. In addition to our self uh, developed products, we provide consulting services and design tailor made projects to provide advanced technological solutions to companies in various sectors. So, um, you've seen this diagram quite a lot today. Um, Tutti proposed that service life of reinforced concrete structures can be divided into two main periods, the initiation stage and the propagation stage. Um, many interpretations of this diagram have been made since it was published uh, about 40 years ago. In general words, the first initiation, the first block corresponds to the ingress of aggressive agents in the concrete cover before the, before the river, mainly CO2 and chlorides, resulting in a prog progressive disruption of the passive layer on the steel surface. The propagation stage is the active state 
of corrosion until uh, until the degree of corrosion reaches the damage limit uh, tolerated by building standards. With concrete being the second most used material in the world after water, the sustainable business culture in the construction industry is reflected in the life cycle design for new infrastructure and lifetime extension of existing structures. For aging structures, which comprise more most of our existing assets, customized maintain maintenance plans should be devised. Actually, the deterioration of any component cannot be precisely estimated in advance. Thus, periodic inspection and monitoring programs are advised. Besides um, revealing the actual assets condition, this approach aims to reliably project the structure save its life and to help decide if and how effective life extension of the assets can be accomplished through maintenance measurements. Main strategies uh, follow three key actions, prediction, prevention, and correction. Predictive is a maintenance strategy, strategy, strategy sorry, that aims to prevent failures and an implied downtime. Um, this is done by regularly performing maintenance work before something breaks down. Preventive Preventive maintenance is regularly and re routinely performed on assets to reduce the chances of uh, implied infrastructure closure. Effective preventive maintenance is planned and scheduled based on real-time data insights. Uh, <coughs> structural health monitoring is the process of using damage uh, detection and characterization techniques for any kind of structure. Uh, it is a non-destructive, in a in non-destructive structural evaluation method that employs several types of sensors embed or attached to the structure. The SHM process includes installing sensors, data acquisition, data transfer, and diagnostics through which the structure safety, strength, integrity, and performance are monitored. SHM SHM market is estimated to reach four billion dollars by 2027, registering a uh, growth of 14.6% in terms of value between uh, 2022 and 2027. The, re the rising growth of uh, this market is driven by the importance of monitoring structural health because the failure of infrastructure can, can not, not, not only incur in very high economic costs, but also result in the loss of life. Additionally, Rigorous regulations related to the sustainability of structures along with aging infrastructures are propelling the growth of this market. Regarding the evaluation of parameters of interest in the corrosion related monitoring, two main strategies can be defined. Those based on manual uh, periodic inspections uh, are usually performed once corrosion is quite obvious. Um, it can be performed exclusively on accessible um, elements and the related uh, inspection costs are always high. Some of these manual uh, on-site methods require destructive or semi-destructive methods. On the other hand, remote monitoring <coughs> uh, is based on continuous non-destructive tests, often by means of embedded sensors. We can obtain data from accessible and inaccessible areas, and it can provide early detection of pathologies. Uh, this reduces inspect inspection costs, but you have to plan them in the design phase. Um, this approach is uh, suitable for long-term monitoring, and, um, and it can be adapted in already built assets although sometimes uh, after complex installation processes. Uh, to perform long-term monitoring strategies of corrosion, we should focus in techniques which can be automized, such as the ones they have been explained earlier. Um, I like to introduce you a little bit uh, on the technique we had with Viterlac, our commercial is protein which is corrective, uh, which uh, give us uh, continuous information on the corrosion rate. 
um, uh, this um, measuring method was patented at UPV in uh, Valencia a few years ago and is based on the use of embedded sensors. Those sensors are measured using an, el an electronic device which applies a series of anodic and cathodic uh, voltage pulses. The resulting current is then measured and stored for later post-processing. This technique um, is known as potential static step voltammetry and is an interpretation of the Tafel extrapolation method. And that's the acronym, DSVT. Uh, with this new approach, we have gained good resolution provided by the, the good resolution of the Tafel uh, method, but avoiding the excessive polarization of the reverse, which may cause irre irreversible corrosion related phenomena. We'll now focus on the long term monitoring. With regard of the utilization of any available, uh, any of the available corrosion measurements uh, for automation, first thing we have to do is to define the monitoring strategy. This sketch is an example of uh, our initial approach to a particular case. Client comes to us with a specific structure which they want to monitor and exposes their needs, so the parameters they want to, to obtain. Uh, then we provide a solution with sensors, communication options, etc. This information will then be an input for the company which needs to be analyzed and interpreted. This can be done, the interpretation of the results, uh, with uh, platforms such as web applications, uh, mobile, mobile applications, etc. Several options are available when we start designing the communications architectures uh, when we want to obtain data from these sensors. In this example, you can see a solution which uses a Wi-Fi connection to upload the data obtained from several of these sensors to the cloud. Um, this usually needs uh, some kind of